Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhakodash, Yahweh being the real name, the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, the Holy One of Israel, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, the men that are doing this work in sincerity and truth, the hopeful elect. And uh, much love to you, one third of you believers out there um, that are Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans and those that are scattered abroad, um, but may not look like a typical Israelite, but are Israelite by the spirit and through the bloodline. To you all, I say shalom and greetings. Um, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through your spirit. So um, I stumbled upon an article that's talking about a, uh, a yacht, right? And they're calling this the Earth 300 nuclear super yacht right that's the that's the name of it and so i have another image coming up shortly that's gonna um be a little bit clearer it's in black and white but this is i guess the digital prototype of what they expect this yacht to look like but um i just found this interesting seeing is you know the the phrase certain phrases caught me uh which really grasped my attention i saw nuclear and i saw a uh, yacht you know, and um, I'm thinking, you know, it's just interesting because we're living in the last days. Right. And so when the thing is, Esau is always behind the ball when it comes to spirituality, man. OK, so just like how in uh, the time of, of Noah, right, Noah was building an ark. And so that ark was meant to save um, him and his family and his sons and their wives and the uh the and uh, a nice major a nice portion of the animals that were upon the earth right but so now Esau is building this it, it could be looked at as an ark you know but he's building this um out of they they and I think they're cloaking it right they're trying to make it seem like it's for uh tourism right that's part of their agenda but in reality I feel like this is the beginning of uh, a so-called uh, arc because they know that something tr tragic is about to happen, okay? And I also believe that this this machine can go into water. They didn't say so, but uh, let me. I'm going to give you a few details on this. Um, first, I want to get a scripture, and then I give you some of the details that they said about this uh, so-called nuclear super yacht. Um, this is uh, Luke 17 and 26. It says, "And as as it was in the days of Noah." So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also was it in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But in the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Right. And so as we read these tra chapters and think about our forefathers and the things that they did and wicked civilizations, we're living in Babylon, America, which is a wicked civilization. But these industries that these people are pushing, you know, we're, we're, we see we're living in the days of uh, Noah again. Right. And so as it was in the days of Noah, so they they Noah built this ark. But this time Esau is behind the ball, because even if you build a super yacht or a super arc, whatever you decide to put a title on it for, this time it's not going to be a, a destruction of water, right? We understand it, and when you read Genesis, the Lord's put the rainbow, the ark, his bow in the sky, showing that he would never destroy the earth by water. But nonetheless, Esau can keep this as a preventative from the nuclear destruction that's coming, right? Because they know this next war is going to be by nuclear fire, Right. Um, you know, past presidents have said so, you know, different people have said so. Um, they said of, the, of, of, uh, of World War three, uh, is fought with, uh, nuclear weapons. Then World War four will be fought with sticks and stones, you know, because, um, World War three is according to the Bible, it says the third woe cometh quickly. Right. And so they know that judgment it's about to befall Babylon, America, all right, and different parts of the earth, you know. But um, let me read some of this uh, that was in the article. Uh, it said that the the super yacht is 300 meters long 
at 600 meters high. So before I continue on that, actually, I want to read a verse uh, from Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let me get that real quick, because I thought that was interesting. Like, you know, some things are irony, you know, and some things are intentional. And that's what you got to understand about uh, the heathen, the wicked. They they find things in the Bible and then they, they know how to to the how to finesse it and make it work in their favor. They they figured maybe that was the, the uh height needed, uh the length needed in order for it to be profitable for uh Noah, so they might have taken that from the Bible. You know? Um so this is Genesis uh chapter six and actually um Genesis six and verse fifteen is the one I want. It says Actually, I'll start at 14. Whoo. Let me start at 12. This is Genesis 6 and 12. It says, And the Most High looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And that's what's happening now, right? To save the elect. It says, And the Most High said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And see, that's how you know another that's another parabolic talk. Because even though he did destroy the inner inner workings of the earth, right, by way of water, but he didn't literally destroy the earth, right? Because we know that the earth abided forever. It says, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it, 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. You see that? So it said 300 cubits and cubits obviously are different than meters. But the fact that they use that number, I just thought it was interesting. But it says 300 meters long, 60 meters high. It says it's long enough to comfortably accommodate 450 people, man. That's a lot of people comfortably. Right. So if that's comfortable. Um, and this is a yacht we're talking about. So that mean cramming people in there, you can probably fit. Three, three to four times that, right? But it says to comfortably fit, uh, accommodate 450 people. It says it has 20 luxurious suites, an observation deck, a 13-story glass science sphere. That's that big ball you see on that. And see, at first I'm like, what is that for? But they got uh, the stuff they plan on doing with this thing is crazy. So how they're doing it is... um. It said, I think the guy, I forget the guy's name who who's, uh, started this idea, but it says it's been taking him uh, like five, six years and five million dollars to create the concept. And now they're about to how they're going to get money funded for this because they said they're going to have millionaires and billionaires financing the ship, financing the tour. So if they give a tour. You get on there and then you pay the million, you know what I'm saying? The millionaires will pay money, but they'll say they'll have students and people that that can get on there for free, but they'll have their wealthy um, tourists pay the fees in order to get everything up and rolling. And so they they probably plan on having multiple of these, but they're going to be exclusive to, that's why they let them be free for maybe um, uh, certain students and things like that, right? They let them on, but... It's really, and see, that's how they market it. They market it to the people like, oh, yeah, this is just something for science. It's something that you can do. It's beneficial to the environment and the community. But real talk, the, the those millionaires and billionaires are buying their tickets. They're buying their seats so that they can have a safe spot if things go haywire. They say, hey, we got the yacht. We got the boat. We can set out to sea. This thing, like I said, this thing might even go submarine style and might go into the water. You never know. With all of the money that they're putting into it, it says uh it has uh twenty two laboratories, uh with one uh, that can accommodate one hundred and sixty scientists. They plan on having one hundred and sixty scientists on this uh ship. It says uh it gives zero emission. It has a zero emission atomic power plant to power the yacht. So that's how they power the yacht. Is they got a power plant within this thing. So. I don't know whatever they plan on doing this for. Uh, that's where the nuclear part comes in. So I guess that's how they uh, planning on having it move. But the the when it comes to uranium, uranium and thromium and things like that, those can be used in different ways. But you don't know their ultimate agenda. This is not just for no world tours. I'm telling you, this is something uh, deeper than this, man. Okay, and that's the thing they'll try to paint it paint it like it ain't no big deal. 
but it's always something more. And this is what really let me know because the power plant uh, to power the yacht, it says something like Core Power, and then it's a company called Terra Power. And guess who the founder of Terra Power is? Who's going? Who created the technology in order to make this nuclear activity work? Yeah, your favorite man, Bill Snakes. You got Bill Gates, man. He's the founder of the power uh, nuclear plant that's going to supposed to be uh, invested into this ship, man. You know, and uh, I read something on that. that his, the company, it says uh, back in September 15th of 2020, which was last year, September of last year. That's when they were first getting the uh, first rounds of the uh, Maxine coming out. But they had this is they, during that time they said Terra Power announced plan to invest in domestic advanced nuclear fuel production to ensure U.S. based fuel supply for advanced uh, reactors. You see that? So Bill Gates, he's been a busy man. He's been a busy man. This guy got uh, ships. He got nuclear power plant companies. He got the chip coming out. He's got. Uh, farm the most farmland in the U.S. He's in, and he's the 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 doctor of the world now. Nah, he's ahead of the vaccine, the vaccine, the jab. This dude is hard at work, man. You know, and so this is our Lord is gonna ultimately destroy this, man. This has got to go down. You know, it's gonna come to a fall uh, very soon. I want to get this uh, real quick. Because, you know, this may not go into submarine mode, but just in case, I wanted to get this scripture. This is Amos 9 and 2. It says, though they dig into hell, and see, this is what we mean by digging into hell. Because there's a submarine that can go under sea, all right, where uh, or, or, or of uh, nuclear chaos happen. And it might have something, it can create a forest fit around. This thing might be able to do anything. You don't know. You don't know to have a, a boat that that where you have billions, millionaires and billionaires. All right. They're trying to recreate a yacht, an ark, man. You know, that's what they're trying to do to save them from the, the nuclear. Maybe they found out that nuclear radiation can combat itself. So maybe if they got the power plant there, it can keep away the other uh, when the nukes come and hit anything, man. You know, don't don't trust this man. But this is what we call digging into hell. Right. That don't mean you're going down where satan is with a pitchfork digging into hell is there under underground and underwater uh uh bunkers you know and this might be one or if at the very least it takes them to the destination that they have to get in order to get to their underground or underwater bunkers man this is a is there's the plan behind this don't don't believe that tourism students can come join and if the students are going to come they probably got certain people coming all right uh, that can help further the future because they're very selective when it comes to people reforming the society and they talk about depopulation. They're wise about the people that they bring on board. Like, oh, yeah, we need doctors. We need scientists. We need uh, we need women for pro producing, you know, uh, we you know, they they always um selective about the people that they bring on. So don't be surprised, man. And they're trying to market this as if it's something that's beneficial for the environment for mankind It's not. But it says, though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then thence will I bring them down. Right? So there, there are space stations, there are underground bunkers. The Lord said that's when he's going to take them. That's when he's going to bring them down. It says, I sh they shall build, but I shall throw down. You know? And even though we know that's about the Renaissance period, that's metaphor. That's a... Uh, uh, the judgment that's what's going to happen to Esau, Edom, and all of these, their their livelihoods, you know. Um, so I got pretty much just like one more scripture that I wanted to get um, in the book of Hebrews, you know. But they're, they're trying to recreate the Lord's work, right? You know that was by the hand of Noah, but that's the Lord's work, that ark, man. You know, and they, they haven't realized that they can't. You can't save yourself, man. There's nothing that you can do. You can't run. You can't hide. When the Lord comes back, hey, if you're not a part of the elect, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bad season for you. Point blank, period, man. And that's why we pray that we are that number. Um, This is uh Hebrews 11 and 7. It says, By faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. 
You see that? So that is the same thing we do now. We go out and we preach and we do these lessons. By faith, we we are warned of the most high of the things not seen as yet. So, yeah, we had the chariots have been pulled up to get ready to destroy. The missiles aren't coming down, right? Jacob's trouble ain't popped off. But we still um, are warned of the most high through his men and through these words that he's going to make a return and judge this place. So we move with fear and we prepare in what? This spiritual ark. Because Esau thinking about building boats and super yachts. Well, we're building a spiritual ark. And this, this ark, this time, you have to be delivered into it, right? See, even the last one, how, just how the Lord closed the doors of the ark. He's This time, you can't get into a, a chariot. Just, in the, just as in that time, they couldn't get in. This time, you're not going to be able to get in, man. You can't get into a chariot. Either you you, are, you in here or you're not. Either you're part of um, the elect or you're not, okay? It says, uh, right, it says, by the which he condemned the world. And see, that's how it's going to be. They're, that's what they're trying to do with this ship. They're really condemning the world. They get these millionaires and billionaires. They had this on uh, the movie 2012, actually. And I was going to watch that the other day. It's a spirit. On 2012, they had about four or five uh, uh, yachts at the uh, arcs, what they call them, at the end of the movie where everybody, the goal was to get on one because they had them for all the millionaires and billionaires. But then they just started allowing a whole lot of people to come in, you know, which messes up food rationing and all that kind of stuff. But they, they try to say that was the cataclysmic thing that happened to the end of the world. So don't believe that these millionaires and billionaires don't be having a, a, a heads up on the things to come. Um, there was another show I was watching recently. <laughs> it's kind of a dumb show. It's a cartoon. But um, basically, there's one that they had to flee this country. They had to flee their their planet. And there's this one of the richer people said, oh, we've been new about the we've been new about it a month before you all did. And so we departed early. So they get their heads up on things when they're about to happen. But we got the heads up on prophecy. All right. We got the heads up on the things we got the heads up on the heads up because the Lord has already told us the things that they think they know, you know. So at the end of the day, Esau is uh, that's why he's pushing his propaganda. That's why. He got chips out now that says they can uh they can deal with the the mark of the beast, you know they can read the the uh the C nineteen you know all of this kind of stuff man, Revelation twelve and twelve it says therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea you see that so I didn't even get it for that part but it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea so hey if they plan on inhabiting out there hey it's it's over. You can't you can't do this, man, without your help, Bashamel Shah. Especially if you uh regardless of who you are, period. But you a heathen, you got no chance, man. So you Edomites, you so called white people, you other nations, no you rich, your money, it ain't gonna be able to save you. It ain't gonna do you no good. When them spiritual powers come, it's definitely not gonna do you no good. But it says, uh, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. That's why uh, so you got Bill Snakes is, is pushing this agenda. That's why the country is pushing this agenda. That's why Sleepy Joe can't even speak right because he got he's de his mental state is declining. Right. But he that's why he's out here um, telling you that he need two mi 200 million jabs within his first 100 days. Man, they're pushing an agenda. They know that the Lord is coming back and they're trying to upset prophecy, but they can't and they're going to lose and they can't even recreate this ark because you got to have a spiritual. You got to have the Holy Spirit to get on this ark, man. And Lord willing, we have that spirit. Lord willing, we have that number. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.